100 years ago, in 1913, the Fed was created. Fractional reserve banking. The legal authority to do it. Takeover of monetary policy. Are conducted by the Federal Reserve Banks. They are banks. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. Century of Enslavement. Hello friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, and I hope you will remember that it's been almost one year, back in September of 2018, that I released a video called Meet James Corbett, Political Extremist, part of the Propaganda Watch series, in which we examined some propaganda coming at that time from Mother Jones, which was highlighting the political extremism of people like yours truly, and specifically my Century of Enslavement, the history of the Federal Reserve documentary, and what really brought that about and and launched that was a series of tweets by MSNBC host Chris Hayes about the toxic nature of YouTube's recommended video algorithm or search algorithm, which recommended videos like Century of Enslavement to, to curious school children who were interested in the Federal Reserve. I hope that that story will be very familiar to you because in my recent conversations about online censorship, I have brought that story up just about every single time. The series of tweets that Chris Hayes did about the toxic nature of YouTube's search uh, search function and and his, his highlighting and singling out of Century of Enslavement, the history of the Federal Reserve, as a toxic example of what one could find on YouTube. And I point that out every time I'm talking about online censorship because, of course, it was literally the day after Chris Hayes tweeted that, that suddenly Century of Enslavement went from being the number one search result on YouTube after you typed in Federal Reserve to being not on the search results at all, at least not in the top tier of search results as you go scrolling down and down and down and find, oh, suddenly Century of Enslavement is gone. And I point this out every single time I'm talking about online censorship, because I think it's pretty important. And I, I've almost gotten a little bit uh, uh, shy or, or uh, self-conscious about pointing this out, because I have pointed it out so many times now. But apparently, not enough, because this is still news to some people. And, well, at least those people who are hearing it for the first time are still shocked enough to want to say something about it. Case in point, a recent example um, comes from Breitbart, of all places, that picked up on this story in a story entitled New Whistleblower a Allegation YouTube Manipulated Federal Reserve Search Results in Response to MSNBC Host's Complaint. The story notes that Google and YouTube manually adjusted search results for Federal Reserve after MSNBC host Chris Hayes complained about the prominence of anti-Fed videos in the top results. According to a source who worked at the tech company, Google allegedly added the search term Federal Reserve to a blacklist file of controversial YouTube search queries. This caused search results for the term to be re-ranked to favor YouTube-approved mainstream media sources. Breitbart, Breitbart News exclusively reported on the existence of the YouTube search blacklist in January and revealed that the term abortion had been added to it. According to the same source who provided Breitbart with that information, the term Federal Reserve has also been on the blacklist since September of last year, and it's all been because someone at Google read a series of Chris Hayes tweets. And it goes on in that article to talk about the Chris Hayes tweets in, uh, in question and to note that Century of Enslavement was particularly singled out as the target of this uh, YouTube search blacklist, which... This insider, this anonymous insider that Breitbart has as part of this series that they're reporting, take it for what it's worth, but at any rate, this insider claims Federal Reserve was added to the blacklist as a direct result of Chris Hayes' tweets. And an interesting piece of verification of that that I didn't think to provide at the time, but I'm glad that they threw into the article, is a Wayback Machine uh, archived search for the Federal Reserve search term. And this particular snapshot comes from March 29th, 2017, when you typed the words, just the words Federal Reserve, into the YouTube search engine at that time. Number one result, Century of Enslavement, the history of the Federal Reserve. Number two, Exposing the Federal Reserve by ANCAP Chase. And number three, uh, New York Times talking about Federal Reserve on interest rates. So absolutely, number one result for Federal Reserve in the free and un unjiggered search results back before last September was uh, Century of Enslavement. So 
again, I've pointed this out before. I've talked about it at length ad nauseum. But it is important because, as Breitbart notes, uh, this is in direct contrast to Google's public statement to the contrary that they do not manually intervene in search results. We knew that was hogwash, baloney, nonsense, completely disprovable bunk. But... Here it is. I I didn't think to directly point to my case as an example of this, but here it is. And with Breitbart's additional secret source that they can't name that says that Federal Reserve was added to the blacklist specifically as as a result of Chris Hayes' tweet and that Century of Enslavement itself has been specifically suppressed as a result of that. Now, as always, there's a million caveats to this, and there's going to be someone in the comments to point out, well, when I type in James Corbett documentary on the Federal Reserve, Century of Enslavement, colon, History of the Federal Reserve, into the search bar, I find that video. (laughs) That's not the point. The point is they are taking search terms, general search terms that people are searching, like Federal Reserve, which is what someone might type like a curious student, might type into a YouTube search or another search box, and would... Uh, in an otherwise free platform, uh, with all things being equal, would find Century of Enslavement. Now they will not find it. So what does this mean? What do we learn from this? Well, one, we learn that YouTube are liars and that they have lied, directly caught in their lie, that they don't manually uh, tinker with search results. Yes, they do. And here's an example of it. Secondly, As I pointed out last week, the information war is over and we have lost. The point of that was to say that these controlled platforms are controlled. You are not going to be able to organically find information in the way that you did in the past. Over the past several years, people have begun to trust these search uh, results because, hey, it's led me to this information or it's led me to that information. But no more, at least on select terms that are being added to this blacklist that the inside whistleblower sayings behind the scenes like things like Federal Reserve and other politically sensitive material. So what is the what is the corollary of that? What do we take away from that? That means it is up to you to spread this information the old-fashioned way, the way that we used to do it in real life, IRL as the kids say, before the internet existed. Mouth to mouth, passing this information, word of mouth to your friends and acquaintances and people that you're in contact with. Now, I guess the simplest form of that in the online era is to send out an email blast or what have you to your friends. And fair enough, whatever way you choose to get this information out is, I'm happy enough. But perhaps that means literally, in real life, actually physically telling your friends and acquaintances and other contacts about this information and about where they can find more information. In this particular case, CorbettReport.com slash Federal Reserve. That's the magic words. And there you have the documentary, the transcript, the audio, the color information pamphlet that you can print out and staple all around. And hey, this information is even sexier now because it is literally being blacklisted by YouTube. And that, that says something about the importance of this information and the importance of you in helping to spread this information. It is now up to all of us to spread this information ourselves because YouTube is not going to help us do it, obviously. So I, I really do need your support more than ever, not your monetary support, per se, but you're simply just helping to spread awareness of this material. And again, it doesn't have to be necessarily the link to my Federal Reserve documentary, but just the information itself. Unless we are physically spreading it ourselves, it's not going to go very far online anymore. Um, Virality for truth is a thing of the past on the controlled media platforms, exactly as I was pointing out last week, exactly as I've been talking about and railing about for years now, and exactly as outlets like Breitbart are finally getting around to. I wonder when the rest of the, well, I wouldn't even say mainstream media, but at least uh, media with a large reach will ever actually uh, take on this issue. Uh, If you want to help spread this information, a handy way to do it is the physical DVD, of course, available available for purchase at CorbettReport.com. But as I say, the entire documentary, the transcript, the audio, everything is available for free. It's the one-stop shop to send people, CorbettReport.com slash Federal Reserve. Right now, at the time that Chris Hayes tweeted, Century of Enslavement had 1.6 million views on YouTube, according to YouTube's view count. Uh, right now it has 1.9. Can we get it over 2 million? Can we help 
to propagate this information even farther. This is, this is a test. This is a test of whether there is still word of mouth available. So I'm putting it to each and every person who is watching this or listening to my voice right now. Can you do your part to help this get this information to more people? And hopefully not on YouTube itself. I mean, the documentary is also available on BitChute and, and directly from my own servers. But at any rate, can we help to get this information out to more people? This is the game for all the marbles. This is what's important going forward. And again, it's not about my work. It's about the information in general. But you are going to be an increasingly important part of that. I hope that you will help me to spread this information. That's going to do it for today. I'm James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. I'll be talking to you again very soon. The Federal Reserve, the heart of the American banking system. For over 100 years, it has operated in the shadows, controlling America's money supply in total secrecy. So all that information is available uh, in our commercial paper program. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks. Any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. Tell us who they are. No. Until now. 100 years ago, in 1913, the Fed was created. Fractional reserve banking. The legal authority to do it. Takeover of monetary policy. Are conducted by the Federal Reserve Banks. They are banks. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. Century of Enslavement. The history of the Federal Reserve. Watch the documentary for free at CorbettReport.com slash Federal Reserve and purchase a copy on DVD to help support The Corbett Report today.